Yeah, buddy. Quick bites. All right, so we have one final question here from uh, Lupe. Another question from Lupe. Bert's junk was considered too risque for national television at the time. How did they conceal his endowment? Oh, what a nice thing. You think of endowment <laughs> if you think of some university receiving money, right? I guess it's a different kind of endowment. Well, my first answer, immediate answer is man was not built for tights, right? <laughs> okay, so just putting tights on in a very clinging thing as opposed to a woman wearing it, you're certainly going to get somewhat of a bulge. But you see, remember I told you that Batman was such a huge success. It was it was such a huge success that like everybody wanted to get in on it. And at the time, and I think it was the third season, the Catholic Legion of Decency decided that there was an unnatural bulge in Robin's tights and this needed to be dealt with. And uh, they contacted ABC Network and they raised a lot of heck. And ABC got in touch with 20th Century Fox and 20th Century Fox got in touch with production company, Greenway Productions. And finally, somebody came to me from the production company and said, Bert, you know, uh, we've got complaints about the way you fit in your costume. I said, oh, come on. No, 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 no. We're actually not kidding about this, Bert. They're demanding that if we don't fix this problem, they want you off the air. Okay. I said, that's crazy. That's crazy. So we had people in the wardrobe department, these guys in the wardrobe department uh, that were all excited about trying all these contraptions on me, you know, various types of penal restraints and God only knows what. None of which worked, by the way. It just, you know, you can't, it's tight. You're not going to make things disappear, right? However, however, under pressure, they did find this quack doctor that gave me these pills. And I took them for about three days. It, it actually worked. But it scared me so much that maybe this could make me sterile for life. That it, at, uh, after three days, I stopped taking them and I used my cape to cover there you go. And, and uh, where, you know, wherever possible. Now, there was kind of an embarrassing scene. We, I had a three-parter called the Londinium Larcenies. It was supposed to take place in London. In fact, the Londinium Larcenies. And this was a three-parter, and there's uh, Lord Fogg and Lady Pea Soup. And, and instead of having hench men, they had these hench girls. Okay. And this was at the time all of this was kind of going on, right? And so it was kind of common knowledge. Nobody said anything, but, you know, everybody kind of knew. So I would be doing the scenes and I'd be, you know, pulled back where I couldn't use my cape. You know, I'd pull back. These girls are wrestling and purposely rubbing up against me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Bert. Didn't mean to. Let's do that scene again. Well, wait a minute. I need a couple minutes here. You can break. I need to go get a cold drink. You know, I mean, they were making life really tough on that show for me, those girls. Okay. And, and they know exactly what they were They, they thought it, they were there all laughing and giggling. And, and you know, and, and they say, Bert, come on, you're keeping us waiting. I just, you know, the things have to calm down here for a minute. You know, let me just hold on. I just, I, I need to get another cold drink and whatever. I need to go to the restroom. I, whatever it was I could make up just to buy some time. But that, you know, it, it did happen and it was real and it was, I guess in retrospect, funny. But at the time, it actually wasn't funny because they were talking about having to write Robin out of the script. This was like, you know, really, I mean, they were serious about this. It wasn't a joke. I mean, I, I, I mean, immediately people think about it and think it's a joke, but at the time, it was very worrisome because that Catholic Legion of Decency uh, wielded a lot of power. And there were there were also um, there were these other groups that like there was this uh, Frederick Wertheimer, some psychiatrist in Germany that wrote that uh, Batman was the wish uh, list of two homosexuals and and stuff like that. I mean, there's a, a whole bunch of stuff that was kind of fringe stuff that made its way to affect us, you know, and. People would ask me, well, what do they say? What do you say about this thing about the, uh, Batman and Bob being the wish thing of two homosexuals living together? I said, look, I don't understand those. What's so strange about two guys who run around, wear their tights, and live together? You know, 
and people would laugh and it would make a little fun of it, you know, and move on. Kind of like what politicians do today, right? <laughs> what was the pill that they gave you? God only knows, but it it actually worked, you know, but it scared me. I mean, it didn't like do anything like, you know, 80% to train, but maybe 20%, 30%. It was enough that you said, geez, is it something wrong? I mean, that's not quite the same. Now, Adam had the opposite problem. Because of the way his costume fit, he, he was too flat in the front. So I used to tease him. I'd say, oh, you're going to go get those Turkish towels and put in your undershorts? <laughs> if you if you know what a Turkish towel is, like four times the size of a regular towel, you know, and I would tease him about that. Thank you so much, Bert. That was, this was fantastic. Well, this thank was great. you. I hope you, you know, enjoyed it, too. I had a great time, as we said on, on Batman. To the Batmobile, citizens! <laughs> Holy formaldehyde, Batman. <laughs>